What supposedly legitimate things do you think are scams? Printer cartridges. They basically give the printer to you. Then charge more than plutonium for the ink refills. Was waiting to see this one per milliliter. FLOs. For those not metrically inclined. Printer ink is one of the most expensive liquids you can buy. Next to, oh I dunno, Panda Man. I swear the whole industry is a complete racket. AHH Panda Man. The most forbidden and shameful of liquids, but so damn tasty. My clean PC. 95% of their customers are over 50 years old, and sadly it makes this company millions. My mom's laptop has seen better days. It's just slow and old, and probably 7 to 8 years old. One day I go downstairs, and on her laptop I see an order confirmation screen about her paying $90 for a virus scan check slash program. I asked her about, and she kind of panicked, and started crying, because she thought, that she did something wrong. She did do something wrong, but why would she cry about it? She just didn't know what to do, so she figured buying a product would fix it. It was a type of antivirus, that you would see, if your computer was infected that spams click here now to fix the problem. Makes me so mad that companies prey on elderly like that. My mom just took us to the best by Geek Squad. Lesser of two evils I guess. Haha, <laughs> I've always loved the commercials. PC was so slow. Program meek fast now. I love how they claim it can even make your PC faster than when you first bought it. No, no it can't. Any website advertised through TV I believe is bullsh. Online colleges. Free credit report. My PC has viruses help. ETC. Especially the ones where the website has a random number attached to the company name. I think that number is so they can keep track of where their advert traffic is coming from. So TV channel 4 has website 23.com and channel 12 has website 32.com. Number 32 gets 400 hits and 23 gets 5 their money is better spent flooding channel 12. If you leave the number off it takes you to the same place. Disclaimer, I made this all up in my head while watching TV and have no evidence that this is true. We buy gold. Just mail us your gold in this prepaid envelope and we will mail you back a check. Some friends and I got one of those envelopes and filled it with bottle caps, pennies, paper clips, and other bits of metal objects we could find. Mailed it, received a check for about a dollar as well as a letter stating how our address was more or less blacklisted. The check was a nice touch. Here's a dollar. Now F off. ADT alarm systems. $100 to install, and free equipment with a 3 year monitoring contract, at double the normal rate, you have to be getting the shittiest system and service possible, ADT is just terrible, a few years back, there was a serial arpist on the loose in my area, sadly, one of his victims a 66 years old woman lived 3 houses down from me, as soon as a story aired on the local news, ADT had salespeople combing the streets, I signed up, because my girlfriend at the time was living with me and was understandably freaked out about the whole upburst thing. Sounded good to me. No sign up fee and $29.95 MO for monitoring. Fast forward 6 months. Girlfriend becomes ex-girlfriend and moves out. I stop using ADT because I'm a man. Damn it. The monthly fee starts steadily increasing. I just cancelled and the monthly monitoring fee was up to $45 MO. Now that I've cancelled and moved, I get a call about once a day from an ADT salesperson. Bunch of dicks. TL. Dr. ADT can break into my pants and siphon my dingaling. Pink breast cancer awareness retail items. Like mugs and stupid sh like that. I read an article about this once in Bazaar or something. Hard hitting journalism at its finest, and it's mostly profit and drive sales for people thinking they're doing good. Pink Ribbons, Incorporated, is a great documentary on this topic, on Netflix, I third this, and gave karma, it's a great documentary about how incredibly fed up the Pink Ribbon campaign is, and how little it is doing, my mom died of breast cancer in 2008 and honestly every time breast cancer awareness month rolls around in October I just get sick to my stomach, do it, watch the documentary, changed my whole way of thinking about cancer, I work at an office supply retailer, and we had some of that stupid sh. One item was a pink uniball pen with black ink. It was $1.99. Pen.
spends are probably about $20 in cost to the company. The small print on the display said that for every pen purchased, they'd donate 10 cents to charity. That's so charitable of you, guys. Fun fact, in 2011, Susan G. Komen for the Cure CEO Nancy Goodman Brinker made $417,712. The Susan G. Komen Foundation responsible for the pink ribbons, is purely an awareness organization. The money they get goes to advertising, and fundraisers and not a cent goes to research. Pretty effed up, if you ask me. I'm pretty sure Susan G. Komen also sues any other charity for using the term for the cure. As if there's anybody left in the US walking around thinking I wonder what this breast cancer thing is, that everyone talks about. Susan G. Komen does contribute a small percentage to research, somewhere around 10. 15% I like. They are shy in other ways though. They sue smaller charities for using the term for the cure and their anti-choice. As charities go they have a lot of skeletons in their closet. When you buy a 6 inch stick of deodorant that has an inch of deodorant in it, you actually bought an inch of deodorant and got a bonus 6 inch container. You should be happy. The college textbook business is a refined racket. It's important to buy a new mathematics book every two years to get the latest updates to the Pythagorean theorem. As a math major, I cannot agree with this enough. The profs that can't research worths just end up writing textbooks and rewriting and editing their own textbooks, and the department requires them for the course until the end of time, while the prof keeps gouging students. One of the profs has released three editions in the last five years of an introductory linear algebra book that is required in classes with total enrollment of over 2500 per year. $140 bucks a copy. What the actual F? Oh yeah. By the way, you have to buy the Simpsons College version of Ekin 101, not the normal version. Oh and you want to sell it back to the college bookstore, you can't do that, because it is a specific college edition, even though you are selling it back to the same college you bought it from. Yes, they bring out a new edition of a textbook at least once a year and all they've done is change the page numbers, or added a paragraph in a few chapters. Then a student has to drop $120 for a new book, and has trouble selling it later as used, because a lot of teachers want you to have a newer book. Multi-level marketing companies, that allow you to start your own business like Amway slash Quickster. List of more. My brother is a constant sucker falling for these awful MLM schemes. He spends hours doing his awful networking crap. He never makes any money. He's lost so much money. Right now he's, I swear to god, involved in a beef jerky MLM scheme. Jerky. Beef jerky MLM scheme. Okay. This is the most ridiculous thing I've heard all day. How the f are you honestly going to sell enough beef jerky to make an MLM scam worth it? It's like they're not even trying. At least the other scams pretend to try to save people money by saying it's stuff you buy every day. Why wouldn't you want to buy 24 bottles of shampoo to save $1? There was a line from Star Trek Deep Space Nine I believe about the Ferengis, SP, along the lines of, they know the system they live by involves exploitation, but rather than ending the exploitation, they instead strive to become the exploiter. FreeCreditReport.com Here's my saf of the day. You actually do have a right to one free, actually free, credit report a year, but you have to go through the government website to get it. You can go here for details on the process, and it will send you to annualcreditreport.com. One free from each of the three major credit reporting firms, TransUnion, Experian, and the other whose name I can't remember. Creditkarma.com seems legit, and is actually free, I use it. Anything that says you will lose weight other than eating proper and exercise. Internet speed, cost, and bandwidth caps. Complete bullsh all up and down. Phone services are exactly the same. Dirt cheap to run. But they keep jacking up the price every year for literally no improvement whatsoever. BZ and other penny auction sites. I mean. Can you really get a new iPad for $3? What's really funny is to watch some auctions where two or more bidders have already spent more in bids than the item is worth, so they have to winter a coup any of that money and they start bidding more the item actually costs until one person finally gives up, undoubtedly broken and hating themselves behind their computer screens. Well, you can, but you probably won't. The problem with these penny auction sites is that most users don't think about how much money they spend without actually buying anything. 
they just focus on the few times they got lucky, and won an expensive product cheaply, it's basically just gambling for stuff. I was blown away by the fact that you had to pay them your losing bids. Scam Central, TL, Doctor, people are dumb. Those stupid plastic things people put on phones that are supposed to protect them from phone radiation by disrupting the signal. If they worked, you wouldn't have a refined signal. Oh, some of them actually work, making your reception worse. The phone will notice, of course, and jack up the signal strength meaning more battery usage, and as those things usually do not really shield your body from the signal, but still mess it up, more microwaves for you. Overdraft fees, why would you allow someone to take more money than they actually have, and then charge them $35, because they overdraft $2, just for FS. Bank of America got sued for something like this, but they were making the situation worse. They would take your debits from Friday to Sunday and reorder them highest to lowest, then put them through one at a time just waiting for an overdraft. Every debit after this was then overdrafted. To top it all off, after your overdrafts have been completed, they then put through your deposits and all the overdrafts usually wiped out your deposit. They got sued for that. And well they should have, I got a check from the class action. $8. Ticket master. Got em those fees are a dunk a dunk. Official wedding stuff the cake, flowers, location higher point everything overpriced and who cares, so much stress for one perfect day, marriage is never perfect, so why put on this facade, that a completely unrealistic, magical day symbolizes your future happiness, the fun, chill weddings are totally the best. Funerals, my uncle killed himself, after living a shy life of unemployment, chronic back pain, which was a main cause of the unemployment, drug use, because of the unemployment caused by the chronic back pain, and being looked down upon by my entire family, because he refused to work, after he died, my dad shelled out $7000 for a dignified funeral for him, holy sh, no one had ever shown that level of kindness for my uncle, pretty much ever, why the f was my dad ready to nonchalantly give him that money in death, if my uncle would have been given, that $7000, when he was still alive, he might have thought someone cared about him enough for him not to hang himself with an extension cord. Burying people is a waste of space, money, time and resources. More importantly, people in the funeral business take egregious advantage of the bereaved. Apps. Why does Fat Booth need access to GPS position? Phone calls, SMS, contacts, etc. I bet so many people don't even look at or question an app's permissions and just install everything willy-nilly. I personally think in addition to telling you what permissions the app needs, they need to say why it needs it. Facebook started doing this, and apps would just give bullsh reasons like to give you the best social experience or something like that. Paying hundreds of dollars to take certification exams for work. Cut co knives. She's a pyramid scheme. Dude, F Vector, such a shy predatory business. CTRL plus F Vector, found you. I've been getting stuff in the mail from them for years. I don't know anyone who's actually worked for them, but I hear it's pretty shy. I know porn is obviously not legit in a lot of ways, but every time I watch one, I'm thinking how is that position comfortable? No one has sex like this. Porn is like the movie flavor of Washu. Yes, it resembles sex in the same way. That Washu resembles actual real life fighting, but it's amped up for the sake of performance. Put another way, porn is stunt sex, not education. That was a ridiculously good comparison. No one has sex like this. People normally don't have a camera guy between their legs shooting cock sliding into cooter. A lot of uncomfortable looking porn positions are used, just so the cameras can get a better shot of the action. Source, I used to be a porn editor. Internet security software you pay for. The best antivirus is common sense, or Microsoft security essentials that chess pretty good. Online slash for profit colleges, they should be illegal, it's terrible how they take advantage of people's desire to better themselves. And I don't just think they are scams, I know they are. I used to work for a corporation, that ran three of them, they existed solely to get people, to take out federal loans. The actual educational aspect was completely irrelevant, all they did, was take advantage of people and government programs. Recruitment consultants. These people are the worst on earth, especially ones that recruit for contract work, 
but especially ones that recruit for it contract work. These are people who literally search job sites for CVs. Download every CV updated that week. CTRL plus F and type in a keyword the job spec they have in front of them has. They then spend their day bothering the people on this list. Because one word matched up, they almost never know anything about it, and just assume that any CV with the word Citrix in it means something. Then, when they find a person who actually does match the description, or at least one they can hard sell to an employer who needs support in short order, they tell them the below. I've got an opportunity with a client. In doing their offering per hour, usually you'll be told half of the hourly rate because the money goes through the agency before it gets to you. I've worked for £115 a day when the client was paying £248. The other £133 goes to the person who recruited you. Should you try to negotiate up, they will get back to you and either not get back to you, or negotiate up maybe 10% and tell you that's the most the client is willing to offer. Once you start the job they will be extremely unhelpful and lazy because the money goes through them. You will often have to chase them to release payment, or be paid late, or both. They won't have thought to sort it out in advance, because they were busy chasing more people for more revenue. They won't think twice about not telling you exactly how to provide them timesheets. They might have an online time entry system, that they don't provide you login for, or it may need to also be verified with a paper timesheet. One you have to fax, because everyone still owns a fax. The absolute worst thing about these greedy shehawks is that for many it graduates. They are their gateway to a first role in it. I had to do a good 18 months of experience in contracting to get a permanent job, which I started as a contractor point being paid less than I get, paid as permanent staff. There are a few good ones and a few good things. A good recruitment consultant will get you a higher starting salary because he gets a payment equivalent to a percentage of your first year salary. Some of these people are genuinely nice, clued in types too, but the majority of them are vultures. Education connection and paid internships. Now I understand that some places actually do teach useful things, but there's just not enough regulation enforcement for many of them to be legitimate. The problem is you don't do it because you learn things. You do it because future employers will believe you learn things. I quit an internship in college because I was just the coffee boy. I just told the partner who hooked me up I'd get better experience and money bagging groceries or bussing tables. He instituted a get your own effing coffee policy and I stayed. I hate getting to these things late, when I have a really good one. Grass. Grass is a refine scam. You know the kind in the front yard of 99.9% .9 of homes. Whoever convinced people that they need to have that in their yard was a genius. When you put grass in your yard, you are committing to watering that every day, trimming it about once a week, and reseeding and fertilizing it a couple times a year forever, and it doesn't even look that nice, but for some reason you have to have it. TD, LR, F grass, for what it's worth, I think this is the best answer in this thread. I dunno, where I live, we just let the rain and nature take care of nourishing the grass, is this in the south or something, that you have to do that, here we only have to mow it, it never needs to be watered or as he did. Multi-level marketing companies like Avon and Herbalife. Sitting through commercials at a movie theater, where I bought a ticket to get in. The NCAA, it is one of the biggest legal rackets. The coaches could go to whatever team them they want, and breaking the contract. But for players the cost of transferring, is to sit out one year, and using up a year of eligibility up. But that is only if the school is okay with it, and doesn't put any restrictions on them. Money wise it is a sham. Keep all the money to the conferences, the schools the administration, the coaches, but let a player get some for themselves, and holy sh what a disgrace. Amway, it's a giant legal pyramid scheme. Timeshare. Extended warranties, asterisk TIL redditors are some crooked moffers. Easy, diamonds, they have no inherent value, cannot be resolved at anything remotely close to face value, and the only reason they are. So valuable in our modern culture, is because of a nearly 100 year long extremely savvy ad campaign. I can provide sources if needed. I think you mean gem quality diamonds. The market for industrial diamonds is huge. 80% of all diamonds we mine go to industrial and technical applications. 
their position as a gemstone and luxury item is admittedly pointless and a trick of consumerism, but at least there is some kind of practical use for diamonds in general. Diamonds have very specific industrial uses, as precious jewelry. However, I agree with you, as a geologist, I never plan on buying my wife a diamond. Asterisk to the people that keep asking me what I would buy her. Check out stuff like this, or there is white topaz, emerald, aquamarine, red emerald, garnet, watermelon tourmaline, alexandrite it changes colors depending on the polarization of light, ruby and sapphire are both corundum, and are hard as f. This is my absolute favorite stone though. A 30 carat quartz stone with a single rutile, TO2, needle through the center. There are literally hundreds of different stones you could get. Why choose a hunk of carbon? Sure it is hard, but any corundum will be relatively just as hard. For everyone asking about moissanite, I can't tell the difference between that and diamond. You have a job outside of Reddit. Randy Marsh, C. Darling. That's why I made you a ring out of the top of this soda bottle. To free you from the tyranny of the great diamond scam. And that's why the scam continues. Someone should buck the trend. But not me. I'm trying to get married here. Health insurance anyone. You pay pay pay. And when you get sick they deny your claim. Being charged a convenience fee for the honor of being able to pay a bill by phone or online. UHM really. I have to pay you to pay you. The fact that there are hot single girls nearby an asterisk. That want to f. To be fair, there are probably a lot, you just won't find any of them through advertisements. Don't ruin my hopes, Sandra was giving me that winky face the entire conversation. Patent law, it has devolved into a show of vague ideas, and lawsuits, it hardly protects the innovative, and now mostly aims to protect corporate interests. Reddit gold. The pink for breast cancer awareness campaigns, when companies claim to be green. It is called greenwashing. The majority of higher education as it is today. The price of razors. Gasoline prices. The stock market. Those loyalty and discount cards at stores. They just raise prices and the discount is bullshit just a reason. To track your purchases. DUI checkpoints. They are labeled DUI checkpoints. But if that's what they were then any sober driver would be allowed to proceed. Instead they check license, insurance, look around the inside of the car for any plainly visible items that might be illegal. They are really just random fishing checkpoints that allow the police to subject people to scrutiny without any probable cause. Not to mention, where all of the DUI checks are all stationed at exit points off the highway point. If they really wanted to be safe shouldn't it be entrance points? The logic is that the drunk drivers would have the opportunity to simply slip away slash turn around. If the checkpoint is at an exit, it's a rumvance that, up in the GTA where I live, Toronto area, ride programs, are the UI checkpoints, I've never had my papers or vehicle checked, I go through quite a few as well, as I work odd hours on weekends, mainly just anything to drink, where are you coming from, here is a coupon book. Have a nice day, I have no issue with that, especially with the number of people they catch, or maybe I'm just lucky, asterisk grammar failure, yeah, that's always been my xp reweight, coupon book, till Canadian checkpoints are, unsurprisingly, way nicer than American ones.